Number one or number two? Today we're going to talk about this tank. And we're going to put some more stuff in it. <laughs> Let's dive in. Look at this guy. So excited, so uh, full of hope and optimism for what this video might bring, but truly unaware of the events that are about to uh, transpire. If only he knew. Let's watch. What is up everybody and welcome to today's video. If you are new to the channel, my name is Zach. This is SC Fishkeeping and I appreciate you stopping by. If you have not already, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button for me. I certainly appreciate the support. Now, as you can tell, I am in a dark basement having way too much fun with uh, some LED lights on this super awesome new uh, monster tank that we're talking about today. I mentioned that we're going to talk about the tank, we're going to talk about the fish, and we're going to add some new fish. I hope you guys are excited, but let's go ahead and turn on my super awesome high-tech uh, clamp lights here. And then let's turn on the other lights so I'm not so dark. There you go! Now we can all see everything. <laughs> um, so this tank here is a 125 gallon aquarium. Now when I say it's weird, it's because it has some really weird dimensions that you don't just find in your typical everyday aquarium store. The dimensions on this thing are five feet across, 18 inches deep, and it's about 24 inches tall. You gotta take out some for that canopy, but I can't take that canopy off because uh, the center brace is broken. So this canopy was actually built to reinforce the entire tank. Without it, the tank would explode. Literally, the water would push against the glass and then the whole thing would just uh, blow out. So the canopy is actually structural. So the lid just sets on top of there. They have another layer with some weights that goes across the top, so no jumping. Then, uh, as far as the stand goes, it's just a wooden stand. I mean, there's nothing fancy. Filtration-wise, there's an FX6, which is rated to like 400 plus gallons. So, that's what we got going on down here. Ugh. And as far as the rest of the tank goes, pool filter sand for the base. There's some rocks, some fake plants. Very simple scape. I'll probably add a few more rocks with a couple caves uh, because of the fish that we are adding here shortly. You've probably been able to tell some of the uh, stocking that's in this tank uh, right now. There is the uh, silver arowana. And right up there is the uh, Florida gar. Uh, the Florida Gar was in the tank first, the Silver Arowana was added a few days later. And, well, I want to show you what I saw and uh, get your opinion. Let me show you a clip. So yeah, so uh, the gar just basically, and this is like a constant thing, it's been happening for like the week and a half that these fish have been in there together. Uh, the Florida gar will uh, bump its nose right up against the silver arowana. They'll uh, stay right next to each other. The gar really just kind of pushes against them. As soon as the arowana turns, um, I'll show you again here. Uh, as soon as the arowana turns, the gar will do what he can to kind of go under or over the arowana and uh, just stay glued to his side. Now. There's two different possibilities for this, and this is where I need your opinion. I want you guys to let me know down in the comments if you think, well, when I say possibilities, this is just my opinion, but uh, I want you to let me know in the comments if you think the first one or the second one is right, or if you have another uh, the, another guess. 
let me know. Option one is a dominance thing. Immediately after the arowana was added to that tank, the gar swam right up to the arowana. <laughs> this is my gar swimming impression, I guess. Swam straight up to the arowana, started pushing his nose against him, staying glued to his side, swimming around him. Uh, it looked like he was pushing him around. He was kind of guiding him around the tank, saying, hey, this is my space. You stay over there. So option number one would be a dominance thing. This is an aggressive Florida gar showing the silver arowana, hey, this is my tank. You don't mess with me. That's option one. So option number two or possibility number two was actually presented to me when I showed that exact same clip I showed you guys to someone at my local fish store. And she had an option that I really didn't even think about and it kind of makes sense. Have you guys ever heard of a seeing eye fish? The gar could potentially have poor eyesight. The bright LED lights are hitting that iridescent silver arowana making it very easy for the gar to find that fish. So the gar stays glued to the arowana, swims around, and uh, he's not gonna risk running into any walls. The only problem with the seeing eye fish dilemma is that's not exactly something that I can easily test for. So uh, which one looks better? Number one or number two? Number one or number two? See, nothing. Clearly, a difference, but it gives me nothing. So let me know what you guys think. Is it a dominance thing? Is it a vision thing? Uh, let me know down below. Obviously, my, uh, my eye test really proved nothing. <laughs> um, but there is another fish in this tank, too, actually, other than the gar and the arowana. I'll give you a quick shot of them. Then we're going to move some new fish in here. So there's also a really pretty gold severum in here. Um, he hasn't been in the tank all that long, so he is still just kind of getting getting used to it, but he does have some of the really uh, nice red markings on the cheek and that bottom fin. There you go. Um, I'm not sure if it is a red spotted or just a gold. And then down here, hiding behind the grass, you can probably see that silhouette is another fish that some of you guys might know. So the black wallago catfish, this is the one that I won from uh, the auction with predatory fins. Uh, just a couple months ago, this guy looked like this. And now he looks like this, and he eats like this. We are gonna go grab the two other fish that we need to put in this tank that have outgrown their quarantine, their grow out tanks. Um, two future monsters. And before I go grab them, I think it's very important to know this is not a forever home for most of these fish. I do have a bigger plan for them, but they're going to have a decent amount of time in this tank. And by decent amount of time, I mean like a few months. This guy's elusive for only having one eye. Really thought the guard was gonna make a snack of them. And now for the big one. He's gonna splash. So a couple minutes after adding the fish, uh, all three of the catfish are now actually hanging out in this little corner, uh, shovel nose there. Um, and you can really see the one eye right there. Big old red tail. And then the uh, black wallago catfish is up there. But with all three of them kind of hiding, hiding back in this one little corner, it does confirm that I do need to add some more uh, fake plants or uh, rocks and kind of just come up with some more hiding spots for them. So don't worry, 
I will be doing that. I'll go to my uh, landscaping store where I get all my rocks from tomorrow and they will be uh, set up and good to go. Um, honestly, the reason I needed to get these guys out is because that 40 breeder that they were in, that quarantine tank, I am doing something really exciting with this week. I'm picking up a fish that uh, is without question the rarest fish that I have ever bought and something I think you guys are really going to enjoy. So definitely don't want to miss that. So by now I'm sure you're all wondering about the title of this video. How moving these fish cost me $700. Well, I gave you a little teaser. You might have been able to pick it up just from the sound. But let me show you uh, the clip of what actually happened. So, I have the fish. They're in the tank and I'm getting ready to do a little feeding clip. I decided to uh, drop some shrimp in there, see if I could get them to eat just after putting them in, um, just to kind of see. We'll test it out. Well, I had my camera, my nice Canon uh, EOS M50 mirrorless camera on a tripod, similar to this, not this one, filming the tank. Well, you saw what happened. I go and I turn, I stand up, camera, nice camera, slides off the tripod, landing in the five gallon bucket of water that I used to transport the fish over to this tank. Kind of freak accident. Anyway, it dropped in. So I have a waterproof camera. I didn't drop that camera in. I dropped the uh, Canon M50. Well, I'm filming on another Canon. So oh, by filming this video and dropping uh, my really nice expensive camera into the tiny bucket of water that I used to move the fish over, I fried it, fried the lens, and uh, had to go buy another camera. But uh, only set us back a couple days. I did buy the extended warranty, which I made sure covers dropping this new beautiful camera here um, in fish tanks. So we will not do that again. We will not be out of commission again. <laughs> but uh, yeah, this uh, set me back a pretty penny. So I'll wrap this video up. I hope you enjoyed seeing this awesome new tank. Um, it's obviously a couple days after I filmed because I had to go buy a new camera. But uh, the tank is doing great. The red tail, the shovel nose are doing great. Air one and the gar are still getting along. And that Severum is also doing great. So hopefully you enjoy this one. Thank you for watching. Leave me a comment, let me know. Give it a thumbs up if you have not already. And uh, as always, until the next video, I will see you soon.